All right, welcome back for part two. Hopefully you got through the investigation okay. And please, please don't just copy this out. Try it yourself. Remember what I said about developing the formulas yourself, right? You make the connections, um, you're more likely to remember the formulas. And really, that's our whole goal of, of the last couple of days are to develop these new formulas. The homework is just to support us developing the formulas and remembering them, even though they are decent homework questions on their own. Really, it's just for the development. So have a look. And of course, any pieces that you don't didn't understand or didn't get, that's why we can talk about it in class. That's the, one, the main goal in class is to understand these lessons. Um, notice all the uh, ones that are starred here. There's some rough work that, that follows below. And I'll show you that. You can pause the video and, and check and correct if you need to. But the main thing are these two formulas. Right? And yeah, they're a bit nasty. Sine of A plus B is sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. And cos of A plus B is cos A, uh, cos, a cos B minus sine A sine B. And you kind of just got to remember these. Right? Um, the way I remember it is cos of A plus B is cos cos minus sine sine. Cos, cos, minus, sine, sine. That one's easy to remember because I can remember. Cos, cos, minus, sine, sine. Um, and the other one, there's a nice pattern there too, right? One each of cos and sine. One each of A and B. That's not bad. It's a pretty easy easy uh, pattern. Cos, cos, minus, sine, sine. And, and the sine of A plus B is one of each. There's the rough work for you to check. Again, pause if you need to. I could post this at the back of the room if you really want to see this as well. Okay, and then the next part, the last part of the of the uh, um, investigation involves using these formulas and coming up with four more. Actually, uh, it says complete questions three and four on a separate sheet. Hopefully, you did this. Now, I'm going to take up the first one. And then, so you can get the flavor. If you didn't understand three or four or have, haven't tried it yet, you do this. This certainly, by the way, this development is more important than any of the homework. So, so try them. I'll go through the first one here, um, and then hopefully you'll be able to. And I'll show. I'll I'll, I'll uh, show it to you, um, and you can you can digest it later. But please try this on your own. There are the formulas, and here's. Why they, and by the way, I don't remember these ones. These ones, I don't have them memorized. What I do is this quick little development in my head from these two main ones. These two main ones, yeah, I, I have to memorize these ones. These ones, I come up with in my head. So I'll, I write down this, and then I know if I want to have the subtraction formula, sine of A, mi uh, A minus B instead of A plus B, I replace the second thing with minus, and you see how the the B becomes minus C, but then there's a couple of little formulas, right? I know what the cos of minus C is. This is uh, just the cos of C because cos uh, C is Y equals cos C is even, right? That's that rule. And so where I see cos of minus C, I can just put in cos C, and there's that right there. That gets replaced with that. Similarly, the sine of minus C, we said earlier, is the negative sine C. So this thing becomes negative sine C. And then the negative isn't inside the, the, the function anymore. But that minus looks stupid there. And so what we do is we put that in front of it. And then sine of A minus C, what really happens if I'm a, a, a subtracting uh, instead of adding? Oh, the sine change. That's it. The sign in between them changes, and that's it. That's this new formula, and this is how I remember them. Um, with that said, you should pause the video if you haven't tried this already, now that you've seen this one done, and see if you can come up with these other three. Okay, very, very similar uh, idea. Um, pause the video, and then, and then try them yourself, and then get back at it. I'm about to show you and spoil your fun. So pause and try. All right. Hopefully you paused and tried and got these, and they're quite quite straightforward now. Same deal. 
there's where I get the 2a from is I take out the b and replace it with a. Now I've got two a's in the brackets and what does the thing simplify to? Well, it simplifies and this is what's called not a compound trig identity but a double angle identity. I'm lumping it in with uh, compound trig identities because they go so well together. Once I, once I developed this one, this one was cinchy. Easy peasy, cinchy. Um, and cos of A plus B then uh, simplifies to this. Now this is maybe worth noting that if I have cos A times cos A, I know that that's cos of A squared. But remember from grade 11, that's not how we write that. It's like mathematicians got lazy here and wanted to save brackets, and maybe they were short on supply of brackets back in the, uh, you know, the 1400s when they first started doing this sort of thing, um, and they wrote it like this. This should be ringing a bell, right? Because there were only a couple of identities. We did six more today, on top of six yesterday, but there were like two identities that you knew from grade 11. There was that one, and there was this one. This was the Pythagorean identity. The Pythagorean identity um, is essentially comes from Pythagorean theorem, unit circle, cos squared uh, plus sine squared equals 1, and that's true for any angle A, uh, and that was one of the ones from grade 11. This is a grade 11 formula, and there's something going on here. They're not the same formula, but certainly I can substitute and get different versions of cos 2a and I'll leave those for now and let you explore them in your textbook or uh, later when we get into solving um, or proving trig identities. There are actually two more versions of this same one that involve the, the Pythagorean identity, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shush about that and, and let that come up in class. All right, so Dandy, that's some formulas. Do you have them memorized? And notice the expectations, the key word there is explore the algebraic development. And that's what we've just done. We explored the algebraic development of all of these, but it's kind of nice to have them in one spot. And remember the pattern is really nice. One of each plus one of each switched. And this one is cos cos minus sine sine. Cos cos minus sine sine. And then the second one, the signs just change, right? That's that's the big whoop there, which is no big whoop. Cos, cos, plus sign, sign. And then the double angle formulas, if, if I take out the B and replace it with A, well, this is the same thing here, so it's going to be 2 sine A cos A, done. And this one is going to be cos squared A mi minus sine squared A. And there are actually two versions of this, and if you want to get them all on this piece of paper, you'll have to look them up in your textbook. Um, this, by the way, now six more formulas. Six yesterday, the two from grade 11. Might be a good idea to think Think of probably maybe I should start a, a sheet that that have all these on. Can I can I use this sheet on the test? No, you may not use this sheet on the test, but um, if you have it handy and you're not always having to look them up, that's a good idea. Oh, oh, and look, and we're going to develop a formula for tan, and this is actually pretty nasty. This one, um, but we'll get to it. Notice that the tan of any angle is the sine of that angle times or oh, sorry, over the cosine of that angle. And so the tan of A plus B is equal to the sine of A plus B over the cos of A plus B. Right? And then now these are the formulas that we just developed. And how is that going to look? Cos B plus sine B cos A all over cos cos minus sine sine cos cos minus sine sine and this is an awful formula and we're not done yet because we'd really like to get this formula in terms of tan right it's a tan formula we'd like to have tan a 
and tan B in this formula. And we can see something's going on here. So for instance, sine A over cos A, that looks like tan, but I, I can't, and I can't cancel or anything like that because I've got this, these plus or minus. These are terms. I can't, com, you know, I can't combine non-like terms. I can't cancel terms. I can cancel factors. And so what we're going to do is this magical thing that comes up every once in a while called multiplying by a convenient form of one. Multiplying by a convenient form of one multiply by a convenient form of one. And this, by the way, I wouldn't have thought of doing this. Some famous dead math person long time ago decided to do this and they were successful and now I'm bringing it to you today. So are you ready for this? This is the convenient form of one that we're going to multiply by. Believe it or not this is going to do the trick. So, oh my, what, why? Why? And notice this is 1, so I'm not changing this, this uh, expression when I multiply by this, this expression because this is just 1, right? Uh, why would I do that? Or why does that sound like a good thing even though I wouldn't have thought about it? Well, it's nice to have coses on the bottom, right? When I have coses on the bottom, that's where I get tans from. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply through these brackets, all right? And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. And I'm going to have to get myself some more room. More room, more room, more room. And I'm going to go back and forth between a couple of colors so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so this thing times the, the top. Plus... So this is the top, and I'm going to multiply by that thing on the top, 1 over cos A cos B times 1 over cos A cos B. All right? I've just multiplied through the top, and notice i still got to do this on the bottom. You say, what are you doing? This looks awful. Where are we going? Well, hang on. Just be patient. And again, I wouldn't have thought of this, so I wouldn't necessarily expect you to think of this, but you can follow along and enjoy. And we're developing, right? We're developing the formulas. By seeing the development, we're more likely to be able to remember. Okay, and I'm multiplying through by this on the bottom. Multiplying through by this on the bottom. And now you've got a huge mess, right? Well, not so much, because have a look what we got. Right? This term now is, now it's factors, right? So look, the cos b's cancel, because there's no pluses or minus in this term. I can cancel those cos b's. And what am I left with? I got sine a over cos a. This whole term here simplifies to tan a. And I get a little smile, right? Because that's that simpler. Uh, what about here? Well, now you're seeing what's going on, right? The cos A's cancel. I have sine B over cos B. That's a multiply sign there. Plus tan B. Ah, not bad. What have I got on the bottom then? Uh, that cancels. That cancels. And this is... Not zero, right? But it's one, right? Because I divide something by itself, it's one. And then I write down the minus sign, and what have I got here? Uh, nothing cancels. So this, this one isn't as pretty, but look what I got. I got sine A divided by cos A, sine B divided by cos B, and there's my formula. Believe it or not, this is actually the formula. It's not that much nicer than than the original, but doable. This is doable. And so homework number one, besides maybe getting all of these on a nice sheet of paper so you have them all handy together, uh, homework number one is to use this formula, this formula here, pull the same trick that we, that, that we did earlier, like take out the B and put in the minus B and come up with formulas for this. 
uh, or take out the V and put in an A and, and come up with a formula for tan 2A. Uh, for this one, you'll need to use the fact that tan X is odd. So remember last class, I uh, offered a bonus for anyone that, that put an explanation about whether tan and secant and cosecant were even or odd. Well, here's the fact that uh, that tan X is odd. Now you have to explain why on Facebook if you wanted the uh, bonus still. Um, but you're going to need to use this fact in tonight's homework. So this is homework part one. Homework part two has to do with examples like this. Um, so homework part one's there. And I'm going to pick up examples two and three in the dreaded and uncalled for. Nope, it's called for today. Today is more lesson and less homework. Tomorrow is less lesson and more in-class stuff. So I'll pick that up in part three.